Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We are all to say welcome to our channel. Today we're watching The Boys, Season 2, Episode 7. I want to finish an episode of The Boys without the last scene being Stormfront and Homelander having some type of intimate moment. That is my uh, goal Perfect. for this episode and going forward. I, I think that... Um, or I, Homelander having an intimate moment with himself. I get why they're doing it. Um, and I... I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that Man. in a very joking, but also real way. What percentage, real or fake, is that? 40, 60? I don't know which one is which. I have I to tell you, tell. <laughs> I am so excited to go forward with this lamplighter like story that route. That's my favorite. It, the, the, the plot there is so interesting and so compelling. I'm really excited to follow up with that, and that's where a lot of my intrigue is right now. Granted, I am I am very curious and want to see what happens with the whole 1919 Nazi piece of shit that is Stormfront. It makes me uncomfortable, and I don't like watching it. But kudos <laughs> I don't like to her actress. Things that make me uncomfortable. She's great. She's a great actress. But also to lead into the next episode, Cindy. 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 What was Cindy the head popper, head exploder, the mind blower? <laughs> Did she blow Rainer's mind? Yeah. Also, A Train, Church of the Collective. Maybe. 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 Ready? Mm hmm Sweet. How many episodes are in the first season? Eight? Eight. So then we are coming up if it's the same. If it is the same strong sexual content. Why do we always talk about it? I don't know. Maybe because we're scared. <laughs> ah! <laughs> what was her name? Congress Newman? Newman. For the culture. I feel like she is going to have more of an important part in this than we assume. Definitely. She was in a recap. She has to be important. Look at those Stormfront posters. Wow. There are illegal immigrants pouring into this country every Who is this? Maybe he makes memes for her. Or it's a promo. I gotta go. Leave Thanks. Have a good day, hon. Right I feel like he's gonna die. I'm gonna tell you something I probably should. I'm gonna tell you something that the government doesn't want. And they want more super terrorists. That sounded like Alex Jones. Why does it matter what some super villain loving snowflake has? Every minute he wakes. One super terrorist has already got through. More will come. Is, is he gonna, like, work up the nerves for something? Waiting for yeah. their chance to kill us. I'm again. scared. Me too. I'm scared. It gives off uh, like he's yeah. getting more uh -huh. cynical, racist, and he's in a borderline incelly. Yeah. He didn't even look at the girl. He's in like an echo chamber. He's gonna kill someone. I am counting on you. Don't let me down. Oh no. Oh, hold on. I saw the light in your eyes. Just just take the money. What? Do you one of them? You fucking super villain? Are you bulletproof, motherfucker? Oh, please, I have a family, please. <gasps> so people are like gonna be suspicious of everyone? Is that what's happening? Hi, Mallory's Look, house. I told you Stormfront gave the orders. I just Whoa, you're there. What the? It wasn't. <sighs> Yeah, that fucked me up. He's willing to speak against Bod at the hearing. We've never had Congress on our side before. What a bunch of corrupt fucking cunts I are. Uh... Oh, come on, you're not the first person to call me a cunt, Mr. Butcher. I'm starting <gasps> to think it's like a badge of honor. Not enough. If torturing and burning a bunch of mentals on board say so ain't enough for you, Muppets, then what the fuck are you good for? A strongly worded tweet. You're a wanted felon, asshole. We don't need your help. Yes, we do, Lisa. Mr. Butcher here has fought Bot harder than we ever have. But I would like a turn if we can... Trust each other. Why test compound V on patients? What do they want? I need the full picture. If we're gonna take a shot at the king. Who's Who calling? I can't fucking miss. Four, four, is it his parents? They're in town, right? Picture. Oh, that's fucking rich, isn't it? Who is it? Like you said, we're gonna have to trust each other. Ah. Uh, do you like the coffee? How about a, a white chocolate beautiful frappe? 
I'm interested that Annie's willing to meet her mom. I don't want this interaction. I'm just nervous. I'm okay with hating the mom. I thought that God was sending me on a mission. I feel so stupid. I gave my whole life to nothing. To a lie. That's not true. Mom, I am in the middle of all of it. The world she put her daughter into. You're not alone. Let's let's get away from all of this. Get away from God. Really? Escape for a while. Mm -hmm. I cleared it all. What the fuck? Oh shit! Carmen, do you think a congresswoman is in danger? She's our best chance to nail Vaught, but only if you keep her alive until Oh end. no, it's Frenchie's job too. Oh my and soon, god. They'll abandon your post this time. Oh god. What if something happens to Kimiko? My stomach hurts so bad. Um, I'm right. Not as bad as Kimiko's does, but. You're in no shape to go anywhere. Uh, I'm in New York. I told Judy to tell you not to fucking come. Language. It's a bleed. Language. All right? And I ain't got the time to just. He's dead. His dad. We heard about his dad having cancer. You think this is some fucking anti soup power know, chamber? I don't want to see Storm. Yeah, it fucking is. Look at this shit. I'm... Maybe it's specific to her power, therefore the no light. I wonder if they have light. room specific to each of the people that are in the seven. You know, you don't need the discs. You can just download. Uh, what do you want to watch next? Uh, translucent, invisible cock. Why are they all queen made pleasure slave? Porn. Big black noir. Oh my god. Starlight pulls an A train. I'm good. I'm good. Starlight and A train in okay. one. Drop the remote, or I'll burn your fucking face off. That was a nice shot. I like yeah, that. Yeah, agreed. So proud. My son is a super. Is that a tear? I was gonna do great things. I almost did. I'm like the cuck in the porn. Sitting on the sidelines while the real heroes are out there doing the fucking. You're not the cuck. I'm the cuck. Actually, you're worse. You're the cuck fluffer. <laughs> I don't know what that is. A fluffer is somebody in porn who, like, helps them get up. I've always been honest with you. You know that. And i got to be honest with you now. It brings me no pleasure to tell you this, but we also had a mole in the seven. Starlight. One of our own. Starlight. She's been apprehended, and she can't hurt anyone else. I can't believe this. No, it's the porn. I hate how good that was. I bet you she's in 42D. 42D? Come on, Butcher, where are you? Like a, like a secret entrance? Maybe one or two, but forget it, man. It's crazy. Hey, show me. Frenchie was the one told not to leave his post. This is your last chance to be a hero again. Come on. I mean, you, you want to be the cuck, or do you want to be the guy who fucks the wife? <laughs> Speak his language. This is going to fuck over everything for the congresswoman, though. Yeah, yeah. Let's go fuck the wife. Consensually. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so scared because Frenchie, we get the line of like not leaving your post. We know that shit went down with Lamplighter yeah. when someone left their post before. Oh my god, Butcher's mom. This is weird. He's not actually He's dead. Not He's dead. not actually dead. She oh, did it to no. trick him to come. Fuck! Have I ever asked you for anything? Ever? Whew. You think we're gonna learn about Lenny? What, no one? You step one. That guy looks like he'd be his dad. I'll kill you. Put it in that fucking ass can, son of a bitch. I'll bet you would. Please, please. I just want to talk. 
Two minutes. Does he blame his dad for what happened to Lenny? I know I was no perfect father, but I, I never got a chance to say goodbye to Lenny. That's not gonna go well. You didn't have a chance to say goodbye to Lenny. You're the fucking reason he's dead. Mm. Okay. You will never sink, or you swim. And in Lenny's case, he no. chose to sink. But he wasn't hard like you. That's why you're still here and he's dead, isn't he? You beat the fucking shit out of the both of us, didn't you? Maybe I push you a bit hard. Are you the strongest bastard you know? You. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, asshole. Lenny stuck that gun in his mouth. And you couldn't act it anymore, and you pissed off to join the SAS like a right cunt. You're the one who abandoned him, not me. You're a fucking monster. I just want to know. <laughs> Lenny could never have done that. <laughs> Holy shit. Is it his son? I think it's his son. This is a horrible idea. Oh no. Hey guys. I hate this. My son. How you doing? What's gonna stop Stormfront from killing Becca and stealing Ryan and then them raising him? I screwed up. We push that hard again, okay? Love to meet my girlfriend. Stormfront. Just like you. Your daddy told me all about you. You have superpowers, mm -hmm. huh? Like a first natural. Oh person. no. Can we not? Ryan, uh, really like you to get to know Stormfront. I don't. Which is someone I care about very much, and uh, I think you will too. So, I think uh, we'll be around more, a lot more. That was awful. This First so... natural born superhero coming from Stormfront's mouth. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? I'm going to my sister's funeral. I have a plan. You don't need to be scared. Oh, I know. That little girl on the plane. What she must have gone through in those last few moments. I lie awake every night thinking about how many other people have you killed and what else have I you done? Have choice. I'm not blaming you. That's fair. It is not your fault. I were as strong as you, but I'm not. <sighs> Just give me time. I'm sorry. I'm here to see Jonah. He's not taking any visitors. Tell him it's Grace Mallory. I'm down. Is this Dr. Vogelbaum? Or did he die? Moral compromise does have it is him. Do you recall the deal we made? In exchange for me graciously dropping certain involuntary manslaughter charges. It doesn't expire until the statute of limitations does. Then I guess I'm turning myself in. We both know Vought fucked you. Probably put you in that chair. Help us fuck him back. <gasps> Just to pay the Congress. I'm sorry to say this, Grace, but you're the very last person who should be asking me for help. After what you lost. Do what you like to me. But some things are more important than the right thing. Some things are more important than the right thing. Go back to your wife and daughter. No. I'd just be putting them in more danger. <laughs> I'll get you all on a flight to Nicaragua. No one sees you again. Wow. When this is done, I'll take you up on that. But that's the point, Marvin. It's, it's never done. done. You just let go. I'll take care of it. You know... Apparently, Yaromi once said you you die twice. Once when you stop breathing, and again when somebody utters your name for the last time. Wow. I'd like to hear about your family. Keep them alive a bit longer. If you'd ever like to teach me. Done. Think he's taken. Never mind. No. That's not what she's saying. Gun? I'm seeing gun. Ah! Gun. Well, that was nice. Hey guys. Hey. hey. Roger King. Happy birthday. What the fuck is this subplot? Yeah. Oh, great 
Great news. I've got a meeting with Stan Edgar next week. Wow. Seriously? Bot needs trusted, proven commodities right now. They need you too. For real? Honey, this is amazing. How will the deep right. feel with Maeve once he's actually back in, you know? Is he still going to be helping her? Uh, Eagle the Archer. Oh, he's Keeping like a brother a secret? to me. Yeah, he was there for me when I was at rock bottom. He's Never. a toxic personality and no church members are to have any contact with him whatsoever. Right. He did seem pretty toxic. Yeah. Well, what did he do? Well, he left. He claims the program has failed him. But actually, he failed the program. We're either still in the system, or we're about to be swarmed by guards with AKs. Wait, what? And boom! Bitches. They're gonna have what a log cameras? that he's been, you know. There. Yeah. Yeah. Does no one think about that? What the fuck is this? This is not lesbian. This is not on brand. We need you ready for Congress with Elena sitting proudly behind you. We curated a coming out story that America loves. It would be really good. Ashley, for once in your life, be a fucking human being. I'm really sorry, Maeve. Wow. Wow. I thought it was going to be like, uh, I'm really sorry, but I can't afford to. Mm. Your movie. <laughs> I'm in a bunch of movies, man. It's Homelander Origins. Did you see uh, the Homelander cutting up? Yeah. Homelander's yeah. trying to steal Ryan. Like they, right. he's oh, yeah. literally like oh, Becca's insignificant to this. He has a girlfriend now, so he doesn't need Becca at all. We can talk about it. Ah, they're PG. We can see them now. Did you know that your dad has his own roller coaster? Mm -hmm. Do you want to take a ride on your dad's roller coaster? Can I not? We can talk about it whenever you want. I need to speak with you. Nah. We're having a good time here, right? Outside. I know what you're doing. Nope, you don't. Yes, I do. I, I No, can you do not. You could not possibly understand. I was raised the same way as him. That kid doesn't know anything about anything. He sees the outside world. He's going to panic. And that's going to fuck him up. I mean, I do guess there's a point my there. Son to have to go through what I went through. His life is different. He has a mother, and I know that that means something to you. I do, and if you take him away from me, this this whole world will feel so confusing yes. and frightening. But, Rebecca, you are lying. Because I love him. Look, we had this opportunity to give him a, a childhood you never had. We can do that if he's here with me. Please, I'm begging you, please. The name's William Butcher. What is this relationship like? <laughs> the best thing ever. What was he like? Oh, Homelander. Growing up as a man, what was he like? I'm sure you don't want to talk about this. Oh, there was nothing I want to talk about, Mom. You'll have stories about Davy Crockett. Teddy Roosevelt, love the idea of the woods, the forest, manifest destiny. But you know, I needed him to be the strongest man in the world. Oh, so like how? And what just he happened with what? Butcher's dad? It was for me. Do what you want to me, but I can't help you. My family would be in Your trouble. family's already in trouble. Because I'm about to go into that room next door. To your daughter, and I'm gonna bash her brains out. And then I'm gonna find your two sons and their wives and their little kiddies. Your whole fucking family <laughs> dies today. Or you help me. How? How can, can you be so. I can't remember the last time I had a good cup of chai. Jesus Christ. How can anyone drink out of a little cup like that and still be so scary? Like, that's it's insane. It's like <laughs> him as well as Homelander. It's like they've already been cultivated and sculpted into this person they and they're been. accepting that's it. That's the, like, connection. Where's 42D? They move by statue. Wanted to make my dad proud. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh. 
He came here to kill himself? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Does it not work against him or does it? But does this take the guard away from Starlight? But Huey has to find it. Is that a light she can use? Oh my god. It is. He said it was mostly soup proof. We see why mostly. Oh. My. God. I mean. Fuck you, man. He could have done that at any point. Oh, and that mirrors Lenny. Oh, need shit. Hand. Need his hand. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Black Noir! Where's Huey? Fuck. It's like you're not you're not you if he has a nut allergy. Oh That's my so fucked. Kick away is like EpiPen or something. That's so fucked. Holy so shit. An allergy like that? Hope this isn't on camera. Does this mean Black Noir is gonna die or go comatose? I mean, the idea of Maeve, you know? That worked. Where's Annie? Is that a human hand? Yes, it is. Come on. We gotta go. He saved her mom. We gotta go. Yeah, like, can we, like, hug later, please? Hey. Okay. Go! Like, freaking go! I love romance, but come on, even I'm like, go! How are we gonna get out of here? Same way we came in. No way. Brave Maeve. Hey, bud. They stole him. Ready for dinner? They took him. They told him. What's wrong? Oh, no. You're a liar. He lied oh, to me. no. He just flew me up and showed me that this house is fake. The neighbors are fake. You're fake? deserves to know the truth you're just gonna vilify we can talk about this okay the yeah, only person he has reasons for no, no, just don't start. touch me i hate you don't worry he'll still have a mother hey ryan ryan hey ryan no ryan no <gasps> no i'm afraid hugh let our star witness burn himself to death thank you what do you mean no worries it's a good thing he went to Vogelbaum after she did. Is that his mom? You won't have to see him again. He ain't got much longer. A couple of months. Tell me when it happens. I'll piss on his coffin. I didn't do it for him. I did it for you. Come. For him is like a theme in this episode. I just thought, when you saw how helpless he is now, you'd let it go. He wouldn't have this hold over you, and you wouldn't become like... <sighs> this episode's destroying me, man. 
Very parental. The family ties. Yeah. Really what's getting to me. Specifically Ryan's situation. I That's know, really fucking with me. Sorry. Nothing. She's off the grid. Fucking find her. Okay. This bipartisan committee. No shot like Huey, Butcher. Okay, yeah. Just, Who's there to represent just the Congresswoman? And Mallory's there. And Frenchie, right? No, yeah, Frenchie's here. Right there with popcorn. The testimony we're about to hear today. Congresswoman Newman, right? Vaught mm -hmm. is guilty of corporate malfeasance and multiple felonies. And it'll come from someone that has witnessed these crimes directly. Vogelbaum. The chair calls former CSO of Vaught, Dr. Jonah Vogelbaum. Oh Vogelbaum. my Homelander's God! Look made. at Homelander's fucking face. Okay. Holy shit. Got you, cunt. Raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You have five minutes to make your opening speech. Cindy. 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 Why would Cindy do this? Just to cause mass panic to the- She doesn't know who's in the room, maybe? Was that the helper of Congresswoman? What the fuck is going on? Can they not even try? Can they not do it to Homelander's Stormfront? Or is it uh, they're just that confident? Or they know who's doing it? What in the fuck? And when he finds out that they took Ryan away from Becca? Okay, that was The Boys Season 2, Episode 7. I have a lot of questions. Do you now? Yeah. Um. So, it's hard, like, right off the bat, honestly, it, like, I want to go right to, like, some butcher scenes, okay. but, but I'm not going to, and instead, I am going to talk about what the fuck just happened in terms of Vogelbaum, oh, the, the, end of the, the entire episode? courtroom, and Congress people? what this means for us. And the state of the country. Yeah, I, um... <laughs> It's interesting because we had what was her name, Cindy, last episode. Yes, using Cindy's the head popper. Maybe. Maybe. Because probably. With, I'm not so confident because with, when Cindy was when we were seeing Cindy's power, it was definitely similar in exploding people, mm -hmm. right? But it wasn't as specific as what happened here in the in the courtroom granted okay i guess the last time we saw it we didn't know where cindy was this time we saw it we know cindy's out that but again like the place it seems like it's more focused for like giving people compound v and then training them from the ground up like this one dude was trying to just learn how to use telekinesis like and cindy was in the same place i wouldn't think that she'd be skilled enough to be able to just blow up individual people's heads here. And who would she be working for? Who would she be working for? Uh, so we know that- Edgar? I mean, we know that Stormfront, Homelander, Edgar, they don't want this, they wouldn't want this meeting to happen. Uh, but I don't think they would cause such a giant stir on purpose, like televised, you know, because then the country is going to turn against you. Like, you, you're you basically putting Vought against the government, you know? And I don't think Edgar would call for a decision like that. Stormfront, I don't know, but... See, okay. I, still, I feel like it has to be Cindy because of the ability, but I would at the moment say acting alone knew that all of these big, important people that did what they did to her were going to be in this room and that she could make, like, a big scene and impact. Face value. 
you're protecting Vought by doing this. Like by right, like 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 and in the. But you're also getting Vought. No, but let's into play. A let's play trouble. through it in like its simplest terms and work our way up to try to get to a good yes. guess together. Okay. They, cl- they killed Vogelbaum. Simplest terms. They killed Vogelbaum. He was a bombshell in the the case. He He was was a witness. You do that in order to help Vought Mm -hmm. so that they aren't taken down. He was better than Lamplighter, who was just a disgruntled employee. As they Lamplighter would have been great too. He, but this was even this this was even bigger. This is someone who actually uh, streamlined and like was in charge of a lot of stuff. Now, when we have, when we have. Lamplighter was supposed to be in this yes, case, right? He was. And because of that, okay. 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 So the situation would have had to be an individual would have had to have eyes in the courtroom to be ready to act as soon as something wasn't going their way. And act, I mean, blow up people's heads, right? Like, you you would have to have, like, the one side of this, whoever is behind these heads blowing up, they would have had to have a plant watching this go down that is like, okay, you're being told, or this is the point that you have to be able to interrupt, right? Right. They, they, they can hear, they're watching. It's like they have the newscast of it, so they know exactly when uh, Vogelbaum has sworn to tell the truth. They know exactly when to do this. Yeah. So they're obviously ha- are ha- are tele like watching the televised uh, appearance. Yeah, and then if that's the case, our initial instinct is okay. You're doing it to protect Vaught, but you have. Stormfront and Homelander looking pretty shocked as well as everybody else. That could be completely fake and manufactured, at mm-hmm. least on Stormfront's end, because she's a fucking psychopath. But if you have an assurance measure like what we think might be Cindy to be in the room here, that would imply that Cindy has been caught or is already working for the people that she doesn't like and has, have, and we've been told doesn't like right like we saw her interactions with lamplighter and everybody in the facility i don't think she'd go out of her way to help vaught here which is one of my reasons for not thinking it's her that being said so you have i think it's i i think that the person who killed Bogelbaum. i don't know who they are i don't think they're cindy I think that they were a plant put there by Victoria Newman and or Mallory. I think Wait, that you saw Mallory and uh, Congresswoman Newman's reaction to this. My reason for saying that is we, I I don't think that Edgar or anybody within Vought would have a fear or foresight of any of their people speaking up. Whether that's Lamplighter, whether that's Dr. Vogelbaum, Mm -hmm. whether that's anybody. Therefore, I don't think they have an insurance in place. If they could, that I will concede on. They definitely could. I wouldn't put it past these crazy fucking narcissists. But if they don't, the only people who know Lamplighter is going to testify are Mallory, uh... Victoria Newman and Newman's assistant, right? Those were the only people we saw back at Mallory's yes. who were trying to put these things mm-hmm. together. Does it even matter though? Does it even actually? So if you but why okay. it would be my like yes yeah. So Cindy, if you are a person that has been locked up in a facility and been experimented on, you are not going to be just mad at the organization and the people that did so, but probably the government or police or whoever didn't save you or stop it from happening. Yeah. You're going to be mad at everyone. You're going to want to punish as many people that you view as letting this happen to you as possible. And you indiscriminately, probably, at the point that Cindy is at, I would say, 
it would make sense that she would not discriminate in her violence here. Like, she's not going to pinpoint revenge. I want to kill that specific person. I don't really think that she's working that way. I don't think that's how that character would be thinking. And so I can totally see this is everyone knew this was going to happen. They didn't know who was going to testify, but they knew that there was going to be all of these specific people. It was going to be televised. Why wouldn't someone who the is died, even right? past being disgruntled, they've been, their lives have completely been upended. They are experimented on. They're angry. They might be in pain. They've been seeing other people dying around them. They've been treated like a lab rat. There, why wouldn't she okay. just indiscriminately cause this obvious and this big of an event here? I'm not saying she wouldn't, but I don't think she did based off of the people who were killed. They were so specific and inconsequential to her, like, her being. Like, the Stormfront's impact. there. Think about the biggest impact, though. If you're... The, where was the camera trained for the televised thing? Right when the guy, the head, was speaking, it, yeah. the camera was probably on him. Right when Vogelbaum says, I do, that he's going to tell the truth, the camera's on him. It was like whoever the camera was probably panning on at that moment is the one, so that the world would see it. The world would see the head explosion. And then once everyone starts running around, it just seems like it's random poppings. It's probably whoever you train your eye on running around. And you just go pop, pop, pop. Do you rem so I'm going to go back on what I had said cuz I have a I have another train of thought that I think's good. Maybe it's not Newman, but perhaps it's the Church of the Collective. I so, was actually tinkering like, with that idea too. Let's go through the people who were killed. Newman's assistant, which you could be suspicious about. Newman's assistant, Vogelbaum, Shockwave. The, the person who could that's be a trains replacement. Who, yeah. That could be it, right? But, so the Church of the Collective we know has... And we get to the, see a train and the The only issue with that is that either it needs to be not Cindy and it's a person the Church of the Collective has in their arsenal. Mm -hmm. Because how would the Church of the Collective convince a person like Cindy to do this? Stormfront's no longer affiliated with the Church of Collective and has a bad taste in her mouth about it. I Cindy's thought that was against just Stormfront. churches in general. I didn't know she, she that said Stormfront that, legit like said she did. She said that uh, the Church of Collective she used to be a part of or like or liked what it stood for, not anymore. Oh, I thought she just liked what knew about it. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty certain. Okay. But if that's the case, then that could be like a direct opposition of oh, these are the people fucking with me. I'm gonna go back to the church, and do what help them out in any way possible. I think that it's in between the Church of Collective. Or I think it's in between the Congresswoman. I can see why they do the Church of Collective. The Congresswoman, I could imagine her setting something up because she knew about Lamplighter being there or a witness being there. But I don't know why you do that. Like, what's her goal here? Her assistant died and she's freaking out. She's having a panic attack pushed against a wall with blood and guts all over her. I highly doubt she knows anything about this. If she did, then she would not know the person would have gone to this extent. Also, like, this was her chance. She told Butcher, like, you've had your shot. This is my shot at trying to stop Vought. Why would she do, do you, something like this when she felt like she had a star person like Vogelbaum to testify? No, you're right a thousand percent. She knew you, who was testifying. At the last second. So are you saying she would have planned this back when it was still Lamplighter? That no, that would be my reason for suspecting her. But again, you're right in the sense that I think that the Church of Collective is a safe bet. But I think that her arranging this or being a part of it could explain the opposite end of things in terms of like Homelander and Stormfront. If that makes sense. Or, or I just think no, it's okay. Cindy. <laughs> if it's Cindy, I don't know 
like I think that she'd have to be contracted by somebody, the church collective. Why? That makes sense to me because I don't think that she goes out of her way to do this. Like from what like she was walking on the side of the road. Like, she wants to. She seems to just want to kill. Okay, here's another reason why She's I don't think it's Cindy. Probably upset. Here's another reason why I don't think it's Cindy. If Cindy was the person who had killed, um, what's her name? Rainer. Ra Rainer. She would have been working under the guise of. Stormfront. Right, we talked about but this. But now she'd be on a different end of because it. Because she's free. We talked about before that Stormfront's power seems to be one that can uh, sedate, can control Cindy. So we could have been testing in and out in the public the control of our, you know, lab rats, you know, and Stormfront could have taken Cindy to do this or given Cindy this mission. Stormfront's on TV. She could have been killed. Grant, okay, granted, nobody with superpowers... Or no, they were killed. Fucking Shockwave was well, killed. Cause, yeah, because Shockwave isn't a bulletproof and indestructible like Stormfront, Stormfront is. I don't Cindy would have killed Stormfront or tried to a while ago. Stormfront has full control over Cindy met with like based on superpower. Mm. I don't know. I, like... You th so you think that the idea of the people, like Shockwave, Vogelbaum, this judge being killed, and then some randoms, mm -hmm. was is randomly explained by it being Cindy? I feel like it's so specific. And, and the, like, no, the well, assistant... I, even, I said it was because it was at the time, at the, originally, it's whoever the cameras are on that is going to have the most impact to the audience that's literally watching the broadcast. Everyone is watching that man speaking blow up his head. The camera is on Vogelbaum, too, because he is the one saying, I do, blow up his head. That's the most impact, is you're going to blow up the main guy who's running this this meeting. So you think it's just for Cindy like trying to elicit fear? What in, in... Probably. Probably like a true like terrorist-type action. If you think of like how a, a terrorist would work, there's like a there's non there's no like dis you know you just kill you cause mass panic and terror, a televised conference or meeting or you know. Uh, okay, I'll if that happens, it has to be like a tur a crux turning point of this entire narrative. Then like it would have to be something that would be interrupting the story that would be a big bad that is even bigger than Homelander. Because it's like, okay, I, if you're doing that to elicit fear, then I'm going to take that a step further and say, you you use the fact that Homelander and Stormfront are there and can't do anything about it, and it, it's happening around them, and like Ashley said, do something, do something. They're, they're not doing anything. Right. Then it would be their introduction of causing all this mayhem and pa panic, which yeah. going forward in the story would have to be a massive plot point. I, I think because, well... Think about it, how it could narratively make so much sense. Homelander's the one, and Stormfront now we know from Sage Grove. Both of these characters have been influential in terms of creating terrorists, super terrorists. And then for that to possibly be turned on their head where it is out of their control, it's not staged in the way that Vaught likes to stage things, like, okay, drop this person here and have Homelander show up with the video cameras. Something going out of their control that they've kind of instigated and been the characters that have created uh, terrorist and villain characters. So they created narratively... something that went out of control? Yes, and then what it would also do narratively is it not only gives our team, the boys, another enemy from a different direction, it gives them a common enemy with their enemy, which is a fun thing to do it, it, But you wouldn't give a common enemy with an enemy when one of the enemies is a Nazi. You know, like, that that's my point. Like, you do that narratively to bring two oppositions together, but not when you do, or so clearly making one of those oppositions racist. Like, and, like, literal Nazis. But I don't think you're, I don't think it matters when we're talking about someone who could literally just be going around on a killing spree across America. Yeah, but like I don't. a super terrorist. I, I don't know if it would, like, I think you could have a common enemy if that is that starts happening.
But I, I get you. Obviously, the boys are never going to be buddies and never should be with their enemies, Stormfront and Homelander. Yeah. But I think that it's... That's... I see that what as is- being an interesting choice narratively to, like, actually make... This idea, they wanted to create super terrorists, but kind of fake. You know, people that Homelander could definitely beat. People that he could, uh, Vought could control when they come into the narrative, when they come into the news media. But for that to start spinning out of their control and now it becomes an actual problem for the world and for the country and for the government. What, do you remember the, what language Edgar used in the emails? to Stormfront about the Grove, about, like, the subjects? Was, was it something along the lines of, like, someone close to being ready or something Maybe. like that? Maybe. But an- another thing is Cindy is not a person from another country. No. Which I think fits, goes uh, even better. Because at the beginning of this episode, you have that guy killing someone who has, you know, is a different, isn't white. Let's say that. Yeah. Uh, and obviously Stormfront very against uh, people fr- from from anywhere I'm other than I'm with you. That's America why I'm bringing this up. Anyone other than being white. That's why I'm bringing this up. That's though. why it would make some more sense that like the calls coming from inside the house, like that the tr- the true like person that's going to cause terror to this country, other than no, Stormfront I hear you. And Homelander I... is someone of their creation that is also white. I hear you. That's why I'm trying to bring up okay. this point. Like, do you remember the email that Edgar had sent? I don't really remember like the wording. Yeah, but okay, the idea of Edgar wording something to Stormfront about a person, or again, I'm probably wrong since you can't remember either. But it's the idea of them being like, oh talking about subjects, this one being ready, it would lead credence to your idea of that call being from inside the house, that person almost being ready, being turned against them. Right? Mm-hmm. Right. I think it's Cindy. Yeah? Yeah. But I might be going too hardcore. I just can't get behind the congresswoman having anything to do the- with it. Church Sh- Collective? Sure, I could get behind that. I, I just want you to understand why I think she's an option. I don't see how it would benefit her. I feel like she she believes in due process. She believes in the ability to have had this hearing be fair, bring her witness to the table. These are all in points hopes that, this that are testimony great would be believed. and I have never made. Like I like but yeah. like I want you to understand why I think that she's an option. All of that are reasons that she isn't and I agree with you. This story does such a good job at not leaving plot points in the dust. Fuck, we brought Lamplighter back into the situation. Mm -hmm. Every single narrative that has been brought up has purpose and reason to it. Mallory, I think, fills the role or previously filled the role with with ample reason that Newman is a part of right now. She has nothing to me, but she's also had interactions with Homelander that have pissed Homelander off, been physically in, like, right next to Homelander in front of a massive crowd. What is her reason for being in the story other than just being a congresswoman who is, like, th- like that's the red herring to me. I can't think of a, nu- a single character in this entire story. Fucking A-Train and the Deep have a subplot with the, the Church Collective, which I think is a very, I think that Newman could be part of the Collective, maybe. But I think that she's not just a loose end that is randomly in the mix. But, like, how it, would she be a loose end when the only way you can stop Vought or have them pay for what they have done is a congresswoman? It, is it to bring it to the government and have someone backing you in the government? Like, that's what Mallory needed. Mallory needed someone to actually finally be willing to listen and uh, bring someone, like, bring up issues of thought. Mallory this had... Is the first person. I don't think that she needed a congresswoman. Back- well, she needed someone in the government to listen and, you know start voicing opinions to the but, public. But all the way back when we were given flashbacks of Mallory, Frenchie, M.M., Homelander, or, sorry, uh, Butcher, like, she was already in a position of power trying to get more information to enact change, right? right? but she was never able to. Because of she lack of evidence. Enough, but I, also she couldn't get high enough. She sees this as the perfect chance. I... 
don't think that she has as much power as like I don't think that she needs her like a congresswoman yes in their own right is powerful of course but in terms of like bringing somebody to justice or bringing it to the public eye like only doing so much here like I like that's not enough for me to be like oh she's in the same level as every other character in the show like fucking un- unless like, unless next season and we grow to love her and like her and then she's just randomly killed, like, as just a shock to us, that's an like an option. But I just don't, like, there's so much emphasis on her character so far in season two. And there's, like, with no particular reason other than getting a head blown up next to you. No particular reason. Yeah. I mean, the whole beginning of the episode we just watched was, you know, Butcher basically being like, yeah, now it's your turn to give it your shot. She's like, she's like, yeah, you, you've done so much. You're the, you're, she stops her assistant from like basically being upset with Butcher for, I think, calling her a C word. And she's like, no, Butcher's fought them harder than we ever have. Butcher, will you like give me permission to give it my best shot? And we have to trust each other. If you're going to take a shot at the says, king, we can't fucking miss. We know someone who might know the full pi- picture. And then that's when they go get Vogelbaum. Vogelbaum or try yeah. to. Who is it? She doesn't even know. Well, yeah. Does that matter? Of course she doesn't know. If she's suspicious, it matters. They're going to trust each other. Hmm. They give this congresswoman a chance to go at it maybe the uh a less butcher style a less secretive way a more in the public due process have a trial have we've it be never the had public congress on our side before <sighs> i guess you're right I, I again i just to make it clear i'm more playing <laughs> devil's advocate here in the sense that i think that m- the guess that the church of collective is behind it is where the majority of my feeling lies but I think for the sake of the argument and the position of it being a potential, I think it's interesting to talk about. Oh, I agree. Totally. Yeah. I mean, we also like don't know. So we just have to speculate to the best of our ability. And we can't, as you said, we can't like leave anything to the dust. We can't leave anything alone. We have to all, no loose ends. And you're, but you're a hundred percent right with every single reason that you listed about it being nothing. I just, I guess I, I, if, if it's not here, I think that there will be something major in in regards to her character at some point. Because, like, every other character, even characters that we thought were dead before, like... They, she was uh, used in the parental narrative for this, like, theme of this episode. I don't know if that is substantial at all. But so many, this uh, there was a huge through line throughout this whole episode about parents and Very true. Uh, what they do for their kids, what they instill in their kids, either for themselves or for what they view as their kids' sake. Um, and we have that from having Annie's mom back in the story and back in the picture. Annie has like a little coffee date with her mom and then things uh, turn to shit. And then we have uh, Becca keeping secrets from Ryan. Like, uh, can we talk about the Becca situation? We need to talk about that for sure. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, Congresswoman Newman. We talk about her and her child, and that has Frenchie and Kimiko start to have a conversation about their parents and the food they made. Obviously, Butcher with his dad, uh, and interactions with his mom, and like I've never asked you for anything. We have Lamplighter and Huey talking about their dads this whole episode that was all the sprinkled examples now we can dive into any of the things that i just said so with ryan like i i was getting like really fucking passionate about everything that was happening with that with that sequence because i i feel like i can completely understand the concept of like but before Ryan even knows the complete truth. Just, oh, Homelander and Stormfront are here. Once they start talking about NBA or, like, going to a baseball game or movies that Homelander's in, it's all this, like, shiny, flashy Uh new world that, of course, not only Ryan's going to be interested in, but 
the second you drop the info of your mom's been keeping this from you, that fucking hurts. Mm -hmm. Because like even during the episode, I think you said it yourself when Homelander was giving his like reasons for wanting to do this and like accounting how he was stuck in a fucking cell his his entire childhood. Like that conversation, his initial conversation with Becca, while we could tell it pissed Stormfront off that Homelander even went outside to talk to Becca when Becca asked, Mm -hmm. everything that Homelander was saying there was, was really valid in terms of like, it, it felt very genuine, like... I don't want him to, like, feel the way that I did or grow up the way that I did. I know how bad the lies and being kept in, like, a prison felt. Yeah. And I don't want that for him. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm on board with that. But it, but we knew there was no way we could have a perfect path here of co-parenting when Stormfront is now in the picture. But also, like... There was no way we were going to have, like, a, oh, after this conversation and moment, we're going to go forward and we're going to go forward as, like, healthy co-parents and start introducing Ryan to things of the outside world and have compromises. There was no way we were going to go down a path like that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just scared of where it's going to go. He um, needs his mother. He has a, mo- a new mother now. Like, oh, my God. I think that I'm, I'm, I don't doubt that given the situation, Ryan would choose to be like, yo, I'm not gonna kill, I'm not gonna side with this, with with you Stormfront or Homelander, I'm not gonna kill this innocent person or overreact, this isn't my sense of justice, I, 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 I trust based off of how his mother raised him, seemingly, that his conscience will be sound, Mm -hmm. but what will happen to her before we get to that point makes me nervous. We can understand why he, why Ryan chooses to go with Homelander and Stormfront here. I mean, like at that age, you're just like, I'm going to run away. And you, you know, like I ran away once as a kid, it was uh, a, I w- started walking down the street and, and I didn't get very far, but like, you know, like you, once you find out something, you don't know what to do with these feelings. You don't know how to put up, no, don't know how to process it. You feel like betrayed, like obviously dynamics in every household are different, but you know, you start to feel as you get a little older that like, you know, better or you want independence or you want something different you might find out your parents lied to you about something and you just sort of like need to cool off for a second most of the time. Yeah. If, if there's a genuine, normal, like if there's a healthy relationship between you and your parents, like there is, with it seems like that's healthy to the best extent it could have been with Becca and Ryan. Like they definitely love each other a lot and but she did keep this massive secret from him. So we can understand why when he finds out about these lies, he's really freaking hurt. This person has been his person from his moment of birth. This is all he knows. And he's finding out that all he knows is a lie. And so he doesn't know what he can trust in his mom anymore. And that supersedes any amount of fear or anger he has towards Homelander who pushed him off a roof and then like threatened his mother in front of him. Because he's like, wait, but now I don't even know you. I like, you know, and he also, he knows he's been told this guy is his father so there's also a, like a bit of like trust in in homeland to hear like oh i'll just go off with dad real quick like you know yo i have got another fucking crazy thing i'm probably gonna say that's gonna be wrong but i think becca's gonna die like very soon i think that becca's gonna die potentially before she even sees ryan again and that i'm not too sure about but i'm pretty certain becca's gonna die and it's gonna put butcher in a situation where he is going to need to and want to save ryan regardless of what he said to becca at the time like a dying wish even rather than homelander raising this kid right because um it's a piece of her if we think about this idea of like doing things for butcher for butcher and the idea of like dying wishes or doing things before someone dies And it being healthy for that person, even if it's not fun. Like, Butcher's mom sets up this meeting with Butcher's dad for Butcher. Even though it's not fun. Even though it's uncomfortable. It's like, uh, this guy's about to die. I don't 
uh, want him to have a hold on you anymore. Like, this is healthier for you as a person going forward. It could be that, that Ryan that, becomes a, another example of that. Well, that's one of my reasons for thinking that Becca's going to die. Because I think that not only is, is that prominent, but with introducing Butcher's father and coming to terms with that, as, uh, as well as trying to become potentially a better person by introducing the Lenny concept him coming to terms with Huey as his canary, like, it would put him up into that position of... And, recently, Butcher has, uh, sparked more of a friendship and trust relationships with Soups in his life through conversations with Starlight. Mm -hmm. So, more reason why, if he, he could have a change of heart, like, I'm gonna save Becca and Ryan, like, more of a, I will raise this kid, I will love this kid, because he's starting to have more of a breaking down the walls of his anger against all soup, soups in total. I think Becca just can't be in it. Because, uh, like, even think about the conversation that Butcher had with Vogelbaum and all the comparisons between him and Homelander itself. I think, it, like it potentially writes itself into a situation Vogelbaum where... Vogelbaum dies, his child's still alive. Yeah, and then you just have Butcher and Homelander back at it again, like in season one, but a completely different The child territory. is the one that's threatened in the episode, but the parent is the one that actually dies. I, honestly, I, I, I can't... I think it's because I can't necessarily see a reunion of, like, Becca and Butcher after their last, like, after their parting and why they parted last, I, I don't know if I can actually see, like, a, oh, I'm raising Ryan and my wife, Becca, and we're all together again. Like, I, it's, like, can't fathom that that's at the moment. And so maybe, maybe that's why, maybe Becca narratively can't survive did this. You, did you take it, like, as matter of fact as it was said about Lenny stuck the gun in his mouth and then Butcher left? I wanted to go back to it and, like, read it because I when wrote I it down. When I heard it, but... when I heard the description of what happened to Lenny, I believed the words as, like, literal. And it, that is what I took it as, but I could have been I also wrong. took it as literal. um, Because it, it went into specifics about what Butcher was doing afterwards, right? Um, fuck off You'll hours. Don't want that with you. Do, do. I, I fucking, fucking love Lenny. Lenny. Was this before? He wasn't uh, hard I think like it was you. After this. That's why you're still, still here and he's, he's dead, dead, isn't it? You beat the fucking shit out of the both of us, didn't you? Maybe I pushed you a bit hard, but look at you. Get the fuck off. You afraid of anything? No. I think it might have been earlier. I agree. I think it might have been earlier. Because I think this is like more yeah. towards mm, tougher, tougher than, than I, I ever was. was. Um, finding things and remembering this is a it's a long episode so yeah because he says two things that are personal that make him yeah no yeah lenny okay. stuck that gun in his mouth i take that as when you couldn't here. hack it anymore and you pissed off to join the sas like a, what interesting language it, granted it's like i'm not very versed in the vernacular of somebody who lives in australia which i assume to be you know. Are they from Australia? Um, I I think so. Uh, Lenny stuck that gun in his mouth when you couldn't hack it anymore. And you pissed off. So does that imply that Lenny killed himself after Butcher left? Or because Butcher couldn't do it, Lenny killed himself and then he joined this? You know? Which do you interpret it as? He did it and you pissed off. Yeah. Is that like an and then? Or is that and like... And you couldn't hack it. You know? Read it out loud when it comes okay. up. Lenny stuck that gun in his mouth when you couldn't hack it anymore. And you pissed off. Doesn't, to it, doesn't, I feel like that's a pot. Like the and you pissed off is after the death. Because the he Lenny died putting, because when, you couldn't hack it. Yeah. When you couldn't hack it anymore. When you couldn't have like be there for him or protect him. And then afterwards, because of the death, you pissed off to join the SAS. 
what the that leaves me with so many more questions than answers because we know that butcher was willing to literally borderline kill someone and lenny had to pull him off so the idea that butcher couldn't hack it anymore so lenny did something to himself is really like no pun intended mind blowing like yeah. i don't get it no i don't understand it either I interesting I think that uh, what we're really supposed to get out of this is just uh, how fucking uncomfortable it is that this father is talking this way mm -hmm. about his child to his other child and that this uh, whole conversation is just incredibly uncomfortable. This is a man who beat the shit out of his kids and tried to make them tougher than he ever was. But then yet in the same uh, sentence, he's like, I loved him. And it's like, yeah okay, sure, maybe in your way you thought you did, but that's really effed up. And, like, that's what I mainly get out of this conversation is that, like, that's not what Butcher would want to be in the future if he was ever a dad. This is why Butcher never wanted kids. We know from, like, a Becca and Butcher conversation that, like, it was not in the cards for them. They were not going to have kids. Yeah. And I obviously this even more so makes sense of why Butcher wouldn't have wanted kids after his childhood, after the man that his father made him into it brings up like the nature versus nurture thing yeah. too. Like, is this really how was Butcher always on a war path or is this just the product that his father was creating? I wonder how much of this Becca knows, mm -hmm. you know, um, Eagle Archer got kicked out of the church of the collective well it's he so... left the church of the collective because they wouldn't let us see him see his mom and they started blasting him as what was it it was like a toxic individual yeah. i think is what they were yeah. calling him I... oh dude that brings up one of the funniest moments in this whole episode huh. we're seeing all the heads exploding and then we shoot to the deep and he's like yeah checking his head to make sure his head's okay. Oh my that God. was funny. Dude, I can't, Maeve took down Black Noir with an Almond Joy. And then kicked away his EpiPen. I mean, good because I, of like, what he was uh, doing? I mean, obviously if you're already going to that extent and you're, you're obviously trying to kill him, then you wouldn't want him to have the rescue if that's what your goal is. But it's like, ooh, <laughs> that was tough. I... Oh, the hand! Yeah, oh my god. Fucking Lamplighter's hand. Lamplighter's hand. Lamplighter blowing himself up. We'll talk about, uh, we should talk about really quickly, or not quickly, I don't know how quickly you want to talk about it. Uh, Lamplighter's action choice here of... Uh, him. So his last conversations with Huey before they got to the tower was about not being the cuck and being the one that does the fucking... Mm -hmm. And do you view Lamplighter being like, I did a hero thing and I'm also going to make this choice here in this tower to kill myself? Like, is he, does he view himself as abandoning Huey here or would he view that as a hero action that he got Huey into the tower for Huey to save his girlfriend? Like, I, I don't know if that, it, it's even that deep like it's like he really he, it's such a quick action on his end to do this that he'd obviously been thinking of it way prior well yeah like based on the language he used too like he wanted to do it in front of his statue like it like he had this was like a plan yeah and... but this bringing of huey here if this was your plan or you wanted to do this, but you also want to be a hero or wanted to be a good person in your life. I think life. you're right. You, you wouldn't just have brought Huey here to necessarily screw him. It would have been like, a, I get something I want. I'm taking you as far as I can take I, you. I agree with that. It wasn't said, but I'd, I'd, uh, I'd look okay. into it in this, like the same amount you are. I think that above all else, it was like, I wanted to be a hero. I wasn't. I killed kids. I wanted to make my dad proud. I didn't. I'm taking myself out right here, mm -hmm. you know? But he got Huey to... He, Huey yeah. knows the room, 42D. Mm -hmm. So he knows, like, the floor. He knows the room. He knows how to open the doors. He's in the tower. He knows sneak routes out of the tower. 
Lamplighter kind of gave him what he needed here. Obviously, I don't know if he gave if he gave him what he noir, needed, but... he would have cut his hand off before he lit himself on fire. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm that joking, was a wild. Scene. That was ridiculous. That was... It was so good. That was who? I eighty percent the church, twenty percent Newman. Cindy. I'm like 20% the Church of the Collective and okay. then 80% it's just Cindy. 80% Church of Collective, 10% Cindy, 10% Newman. Dang. Like, I, I'm, like, I'm just like, this is just going to be another instance where I'm going to get, like, yelled at, apparently, for just for not paying attention enough to the show. But, like, in my mind, I'm just, like, building, like, a family tree of different si- like narrative sides of where we've been that baseline right. the boys and baseline in the soups mainly what homelander could... and as it's right. structured up like there's a like i don't know this I... is what happens when you when when we watch a show where there is a lot of things that are connected where once you start thinking about it that way then you might o- either overcompensate or might miss out on some things that are connecting but this is the opposite of that because i think that like like in the specific instance that you and i are both thinking about and i think if people have watched both shows know what i'm referring to like that i'm like okay i'm taking source material that i was given previously in the show and running with it this i think that i'm looking at it more of like i'm not even paying attention to like it this is like an opinion if i remove myself from what they're trying to show me because i would be offering this up as like a potential red herring or something Mm -hmm. that would be we're trying to be deceived and it not to be the case and like building it up structurally like in like a plot structure or plot tree i think that it's fair to try to talk about newman's significance and like how much more significance she'll hold in the story i mean she was kind of like dropped on us like it was slow but like we started seeing her on tv screens talking didn't think she was going to be important and then we see her in real life on a stage and then homelander interacts with her it's like she started growing more and more important and i i don't think that that's uh weird to try to think of like where that goes what extent does it go at we don't actually know anything about her or her motives other than what job she does and what kind of side against what she's on so like we have so many pieces to her puzzle that we don't have answers to or what she's going to be for the narrative going forward so it's it makes sense to speculate. I keep to... going back and forth, though, because I'm pretty sure that the head exploded in episode one. And if I was writing it, that'd be the same episode that I'd introduce Newman. But that didn't happen, I don't think. Well, I don't think w- we got Newman until... On the stage? But I think hinted at before then, but I'm pretty sure we I saw wrote her it down as a and got on, it. Like, being interviewed by newscasters, maybe even at the end of season one, but I'm not sure... Anytime we saw the news on, it, there was a guy newscaster. I don't and even. Then she have... was being interviewed multiple times in multiple different episodes, and I don't know when that started. I, I don't think I wrote it down. Much, I didn't pay too much attention to it because I didn't take it as like significant or as it was going to be. Season two, episode five, is the first time I have Victoria Congresswoman Newman written down, and I think that we had seen that before, and that would be see then like the more i get into it the more like i muddle myself because that would be very odd right to have uh, like the head explode in episode one with no talking about did uh, did we get much church of the collective in episode one we did episode one's when we were introduced to eagle the archer church of the collective and then yeah that's why i'm like cindy church of the collective if i have church of collective can we don't know where their reach actually is we do know they have a meeting with edgar and like we said they could be one in the same are we doing this before the meeting with edgar so that we have leverage for the meeting with edgar we could even bring cindy to the meeting if they are connected that's fun i don't know if that's my guess at the moment church of the collective church of the collective probably knew about sage grove if they know all of this insider information, they probably knew about that facility. They, but like, just like, I, I'm like, there isn't without reason, 
they're Alistair Adana, like what the fuck, man? Yeah. I need to know the origins of the Church of the Collective. I feel like that the Church of the Collective needs to be more prominent because I love the idea of a church being so, having so much infiltrated the government and then, like, big companies and, like, everything and have their hands in, like, everything. That's so freaky, and mm. I, I think that's entertaining. Hmm. But also unsettling. And Maybe the reason why I'm so, like, skeptical is because I feel like I'm going to be a little transparent here. I feel like in this season, more specifically, there, and this is probably, this could be me reading too much into it. I don't think it is. There are so many, like, real life parallels, whether it's with, like, certain, uh, certain personalities and, like, superheroes here or figures or even the Church of the Collective being, like, very, oh, churches with high-ranking actors and personalities in real life. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's why I feel like there isn't a good side. Like, they're, like each side has their own nefarious purposes and reasons mm -hmm. that are met with, sec like, you know, secret. Yeah. Maybe and that's then also, a bit you of... don't know as a viewer how much am I to apply from things that I've seen outside of watching this show to what they might be doing in the show because they've done things in the show that we're shocked that they're doing mm -hmm. that are reminiscent of some real world stuff <sighs> crazy episode yes crazy sorry episode. for talking so much about my dumb theory i feel i feel bad i'm sorry i apologize <laughs> church collective though that's, that's what we're here for yeah. is to talk about our dumb theories god all right that's all i have for you yep Kimiko's moments this episode were great with Frenchie too. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to spotlight yeah. that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time.